Doctors of Reddit, what's your weirdest case of a patient accurately self-diagnosing? Mystery of stuff. I was in the fifth grade, complained to everyone including my school nurse and GP about a sore wrist after a bungee cord snapped on it. Flash forward four years and I'm getting x-rays on them for carpal tunnel, they showed a fracture clear through the outside tip of my radius. Another doctor in his late 60s. He had abdominal pain and lost about 20 pounds in two months. He said he thought he had pancreatic cancer. Turns out he had pancreatic cancer. I had a patient who predicted her own death. She was a relatively healthy 90-year-old with hypertension and diabetes. She woke up that morning, told her daughter that she was going to die. She made her daughter go to a lawyer's office and sign a living will, confirming DNR slash DNI. That evening she had a massive heart attack and was rushed to the ER. We tried medical management, but per her wishes, per he living will that she signed like six hours earlier, she did not want any invasive measures taken. She died about an hour after she came in. My dad did the same thing. Labor Day six years ago he woke up and said to call anyone that might want to say bye because he was dying today. He had a neurological disease and had progressively been get worse. By early evening he had said all his goodbyes. I'm a nurse so I said with him the whole time and helped with his hospice meds. He died at 11.56 p.m. I've heard stories of people on parole being required to take a urine test to prove they weren't using drugs or alcohol. Their test came back negative for drugs but positive for pregnancy. They assumed they had borrowed urine from a wife or girlfriend and were sent to jail. I wonder if those guys actually had testicular cancer. My dad, who is a great person, but also occasionally an asshole, took my three-year-old sister to the ER with the flu. Thing is, there was a meningitis outbreak in the area, and the ER was packed. Dad, being an ass, tells the nurse he is suspecting meningitis to bump us to the top of the list. The doctor is pissed because she has no meningitis symptoms, no stiff neck, no fever. They get into an argument. He orders a spinal tap since dad is concerned. Dad will not back down at this point. And it comes back positive for meningitis. Not about a doctor but an EMT. When my friend was in college, his appendix burst. He was in extreme pain, couldn't really move, and was acting delirious. His girlfriend called 911 and said she thinks his appendix burst. Ambulance shows up, EMTs think he's just drunk and refuse to take him seriously. They take their time, give lots of attitude, lecture them about drinking underage all while she is panicking telling them that he doesn't drink and needs to be at the hospital now. She was right and the EMTs almost killed him. During my second lung collapse the doctor was adamant that it was just a panic attack. Since it felt exactly like my first lung collapse I kept insisting he take an x-ray. After the x-ray results he said against all probable odds you were right and I had a tube in my chest within the hour. That's super weird to hear because when I had a collapsed lung the paramedics guessed it just by looking at me. Also lung pain is so obviously distinct from heart, muscle or back pain, people tend not to mistake a sharp pain when they breathe in for something else. I would say well maybe you don't fit the description of somebody at risk for a collapsed lung but you said it was your second one, surely it should have been the first thing the doctor suspected. Seems like such a basic and easy to avoid fuck up on his part. Not a doctor, but the Texas shooter diagnosed himself with a brain tumor and no one believed him, despite him going to multiple doctors and begging to be checked. He literally killed a bunch of people to prove to the doctors there was something wrong with him and gosh darn it if the autopsy didn't find a giant tumor in his brain pressing on the aggression center. Edit, the shooter's name is Charles Whitman. I now realize how ambiguous the title Texas shooter sounds. Went to the same emergency room twice explaining that something was fucked up in my head. They diagnosed me with anxiety attacks both times. Had stroke two days later. I went to ER several times for weird, dissociative head stuff. They brushed it off as anxiety attacks every time. 
Six years after the initial episode a doctor finally ordered a CT scan that revealed a slow-growing brain tumor. By this point it was the size of golf ball. The pathology report approximated it had been present for 10 to 15 years. I guess technically they were right every time they told me it was all in my head. I was 9 when I fell off of my bike on a family bike ride. I was screaming like crazy, say my leg was broke. My parents thought I was crying wolf and told me to walk it off. When I wouldn't shut up, my dad carried me to the parking lot while my mom got the car. I remember my dad telling me to put my leg in a position if I truly thought it was broken, but he was still skeptical. Lo and behold when we went to the ER to get an MRI, my leg had a spiral fracture. Mystery of Stuff